A very good morning dear students of class 7 and I am happy to welcome you all for today's zoology class. So what are we going to learn today? Let's see. So today's topic is a new lesson chapter 5 in zoology which is called excretory system. So what is the name of the lesson? Excretory system. So when you hear this word excretory system, uh, what you may take in mind is it may be related to some waste products right so let's see what is all uh, under the excretory system so here actually every living organism has excretory system whether it can be a, a small uh, insect or ant or a very big uh, whale or even in human beings every living organism will have some excretory system but in your uh, class 7 the book has only human excretory system you are going to learn only about human excretory system so every excretory system will be different right even in your um, classification lesson you have studied some small animals only has a one hole or pore in the body through which it takes food and it gives out the waste you have studied but in human beings it is not that way we take in food through mouth and we pass out through the anus so it differs that is the excretory system differs from organism to organism so this lesson is only focused on human excretory system so before learning about the excretory system let's uh, know some concepts how are waste formed so you know uh, excretion means some waste product so in your body how is the waste product formed first of all you have to think how is waste formed in your body because of metabolic activities in your body your body undergoes metabolic activities what is this metabolic activities we have studied about enzymes all no say for example a larger uh, rice particle or a starch is broken down into small small sugars it is a metabolic activity so similarly you have many metabolic activities in your body where it happens it happens inside your cells so because of these metabolic activities the waste products are formed inside your body and that has to be removed from your body so that is the concept here similarly there are many metabolic activities in your body which you will be learning in your higher grades but just remember because of metabolic activities some waste are produced apart from the sugar being carbohydrate being broken down into simple sugar along with the simple sugar some waste is also produced where it is produced it is produced inside the cells of your body each cell of your body will undergo metabolism okay so you have so much of waste products accumulated in your body then what will happen if you have waste inside your body so the cells because of metabolism has produced so much of waste so what will happen if it is uh, accumulated in the body it becomes toxic to your body what is toxicity it means it is poisonous if waste is if you are holding waste for a longer duration then it will become toxic or poisonous and it becomes harmful when accumulated for a longer time it is harmful to your body if you have some toxic materials your body will be affected so this is the result if you hold on the waste for a longer time so what the what is the solution for this the waste has to be removed from your body right so what is the solution unwanted products should be anything unwanted in your body should be removed from your body how, how all and when all it should be removed it should be removed periodically what is periodically when it should be removed it should be removed periodically what is periodically periodically means at regular intervals say for example you release your waste every day in the morning you cannot store it for one week you will fall sick because of the toxicity okay so it has to be removed periodically at regular intervals it has to be removed so this is the introductory part for excretory system next we learn about the definition for excretion what is excretion it is a process right excretion similar to respiration all excretion is also a process happening in in your body so excretions definition is it is a process in your body where 
metabolic waste see the in the introductory part itself i have explained this but anything as i tell you everything should be in a defined form the definition the two lines itself will tell the whole story that's the speciality of definitions right so explanation part is different like explaining for a um, one page or two page everything can be brought up into a crisp de definition in two sentences right this whole story can be uh, confined to two sentences so there are four keywords in this definition for excretion the first keyword is it is a process the second keyword is what is happening the metabolic waste is removed from the body so we have already studied cells undergo metabolism right so all those waste are removed from the body from the body organs why this word is used body organs because in every organ this removal process is happening you will be learning in the upcoming slides about the uh, uh, body organs which is all responsible for waste removal so what is the definition for excretion it is a process where metabolic waste is removed from several body organs in your in any living organism so you have to memorize this definition what next okay the four organs of excretion what is this the four organs of excretion uh, most of us what we imagine being as uh, when i was small or um, i think you even you must be imagining so that excretion means just whatever you pass out every day in the morning that is excretion we imagine right only that is the way of removing the waste in the form of feces or stools is the uh, process of excretion most of us will imagine but that is not true actually excretion in your body is happening through four organs so how many organs four organs are involved in excretion what are they through the lungs through the skin through the kidney and through the liver so how all excrete what these are all excretory organs that's why in the definition it was mentioned that it is removed by through the body organs no so what are those four organs lungs skin kidney and liver so in today's class we will be learning about all these four organs and how the waste is removed through these four organs will be about today's class so this is uh, a part of a skin showing sweat droplets don't think what it is and lungs you know no where is your lungs it is in your chest area and where is the kidney it is in the abdominal area where is the liver liver is a triangular shaped structure nearby the heart region no so just know its location so first we learn about the lungs the same picture i have displayed again the yellow color region no this these two are a pair of lungs so how uh waste is removed through lungs by a process called as respiration so how it is removed it is a process called as respiration again a misconception usually many uh, what they think is respiration means what is respiration breathing they think which is wrong respiration is not breathing at all it is wrong okay what is respiration then many think respiration means inhaling and exhaling that is called as breathing the air you take in and air you give out no that process is called as breathing it is not respiration okay then what is respiration respiration is the breakdown of glucose into carbon dioxide and water see what is carbon dioxide right so what is respiration respiration is the breakdown of glucose into carbon dioxide and water of course in this also some gases involved what is that gas the end product is carbon dioxide right so your lungs is involved in breathing um, sorry respiration also similar to breathing but in this process here what is happening in breathing what you do just you take in oxygen you take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide right oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out like oxygen through the 
uh, nose it goes inside and throughout your body it will circulate and it will be eliminated as carbon dioxide and this process is called as what is this process it is called as breathing this is not respiration the concept is clear okay because now many children uh, when I ask what is um, respiration they tell taking enough oxygen and giving up carbon dioxide that's why I am specifying this strongly okay so what did I tell you respiration is the breakdown of glucose which will release out carbon dioxide and water again in this also lungs is involved because it will give out carbon dioxide so in breathe respiration also similar to breathing what is given out carbon dioxide is given out but oxygen is not taken in in respiration only in breathing oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out okay so this is the definition for respiration then what will happen this waste gas that is carbon dioxide no it will be mixed with the blood so when you eat some glucose it is broken down and the product formed is carbon dioxide and water and this carbon dioxide is mixed with the blood is it good that your blood has carbon dioxide it's not good right your blood is supposed to have more oxygen only then you can be active and healthy so this carbon dioxide gas should be removed out through your body so we are studying about lungs no so which is involved in the removal of the waste gas through ex uh, you exhale or it is called as exhalation exhalation is the actual process where you breathe out exhale means breathing out what is exhale breathe out breathing out okay so how lungs can be considered as a excretory organ in the process of respiration produces carbon dioxide and water and lungs are involved in exhalation or removal of carbon dioxide which is formed in the process of respiration this is about lungs so next we will study about the next excretory organ about the four excretory organs will be studying in today's class so what is the next organ described it is the skin okay how skin is a excretory organ you sweat right you produce sweat sweat is a excretory product it is a waste product right is sweat good it is it a good water no it is waste of your body okay so uh, how skin acts as a excretory organ we'll see in this slide so actually okay skin has two glands your skin has two glands one is called as sweat gland and the next one is called as oil glands so what are the glands in your skin what are we studying about we are studying how skin acts as a excretory organ right so your skin has two um, glands one is called as sweat gland which produces sweat and the next one is called as oil gland or sebaceous glands which is not given in your textbook just the word oil gland is given actually it is called as sebaceous glands okay so sweat glands what all is released uh, through your skin either sweat can be released or oil can be re uh, released have you seen some will have so much of oil on their face oily face or oily skin we call no from where those oil come it is not from the stomach directly it will not pop through your face right the oil glands will ex um, expel or excrete the oil out that's why the face appears to be oily so the oil glands is responsible for that so we'll first learn about the sweat glands what do the sweat glands produce obviously you know sweat glands produce a liquid called as sweat all of us sweat right so what is present in sweat is it uh, full of water have you tasted sweat uh, not intentionally we don't uh, drink sweat at all but accidentally if you have tasted no it is so salty right how is sweat it is salty why it is salty because it has sodium salts see sodium uh, chloride is the common salt the table salt what we eat is sodium chloride right it, it gives some salty taste so sweat also contains sodium salt and urea 
some water so three components what is all present in sweat sweat has water that you know and sweat has sodium salt that is why it is salty in taste and it also has a salt called as urea about that we learn in the upcoming slide what urea is okay so so from where the um, sweat comes out the skin has sweat pores what is pore pore means hole the meaning for pore is hole okay so the skin has sweat pores and through the sweat pores the sweat comes out and also i as i told you the oil glands in your skin will produce oil and that oil will also it is called as this oil is called as sebum the oil is technically called as sebum what is sebum the oil uh, oil is called as sebum what is it it is a fatty substance oil itself see generally the nutrients are categorized as carbohydrates proteins and fats right fats means all oil categories the oil what you eat is all coming under fats okay when fat is accumulated only the person is um, fat in nature okay so it produces sebum and it is a fatty substance so what have we seen skin has two types of glands sweat glands produce sweat which is made up of water sodium salt and urea and skin has pores out of that only the sweat comes out and also the oil glands will give out oil so the oil is called as sebum which is nothing but a fatty substance this is what we have learned okay why do we need to sweat what is the function of sweating so as soon as a person sweats the body becomes cool it regulates the body temperature when you sweat you sweat during a hot day right so whenever the atmospheric temperature the atmosphere has higher temperature the body will also become hot and it is a, a regulatory mechanism regulatory means like a repair mechanism or something which can control a regulator you have a refrigerator or you have regulators now in olden days not uh, these days so which means it can regulate means it can control the body temperature so when the uh, environment is very hot the body has some mechanism of sweating which can bring down the temperature of the body or it will not let the body's temperature to increase as per the uh, environment's temperature okay so it is a process of cooling your body when your body is trying to become hot you sweat and thus the body is cool because of the water or the moisture so next we learn about the other two excretory organs so what is the next excretory organ yeah kidneys this is common to you right or you must have known this um kidneys are the ones which produce waste materials and you excrete daily out in the morning right you release out the waste materials which is produced by the which is eliminated by the kidney urea uh, i told you now i'll explain about urea from where urea is produced see uh, i told you you eat uh, carbohydrates proteins and fats the major nutrients in your uh, what you intake is carbohydrates proteins and fats right so out of this the proteins will digest your body will try to digest the proteins what you eat and some proteins are not digested no the undigested protein is released in the form of urea inorganic salts and water okay so what did i tell you you eat protein as major nutrient all the proteins you eat are not digested some undigested proteins are broken down into these three what are they urea water and inorganic salts and you call them as nitrogenous waste the proteins the waste the proteins after they break down are released out as waste materials in the form of urea water and inorganic salts your urine will have so much of urea okay so what is the function of the kidney 
one function you know it will release out all the waste products okay it is a major excretory organ see sweat is a uh, excretory organ but it does not directly play a, see whatever you are eating no it is not given out through your sweat or the sebaceous glands right the major excretory organ through which you flush out all the waste out of your body is actually the kidney it only uh, filters the unwanted or undigested materials and sends out of your body through the anus right so one more function is it also the kidneys also is involved in osmo regulation osmo regulation means water and salt balance see if you have so much of salt in your body the body will retain the water okay and if you have less salt suppose in your food your mom adds uh, so much of salt what you do you will feel uh, tempted to drink so much of water because your body tells you you your body needs more water always the salt in your body and water level in your body should be a uh, balanced okay otherwise what you will do you will either drink suppose if you have very little salt in your body you will pass more urine and the salts are all sorry the water is all removed and the concentration of the salt is balanced suppose if you have so much of salt in your body you drink more water and again you balance the concentration of the salt in your body so this is uh, decided by the kidneys the kidney will decide whether to retain some water inside the body or to give out more water out of your body in the form of urine so kidney is the one which is involved in osmo regulation so this is about kidneys then the last excretory organ is liver okay so in the liver there are two processes happening okay there are many processes happening the content uh, described in your textbook is there are two processes involved what is the first one i told you whenever you eat this is amino acids okay a a is at at i have written no it is amino acids i told you in the previous slide whenever you eat protein what will happen the undigested protein is passed out in the form of urea and inorganic salts i told you right see here when you eat so much of protein this all the proteins are uh, broken down into amino acids amino acid is not the waste in the previous slide i told you protein is broken down into what did i tell you protein is broken down into urea and inorganic salts no that is a waste product but a good product is amino acids proteins are also broken down into amino acids so amino acid is not a waste product it is a good product okay then these amino acids when they break when the amino acids further break they also release the waste called as urea okay what will happen this urea will be transported to the kidneys where the urea is uh, re released it is released into the kidneys and then as usual the kidney will uh, remove the waste in the form of feces or stools so what how kidney is involved in excretion you eat so much of proteins which is digest which is broken down into small small amino acids and then amino acids are digested further similar to proteins amino acids will also release urea which is a waste what is the waste here again urea is a waste product and this waste is transported to the kidney and the kidney will release out the waste this is the first process the second process happening in the liver is okay you have rbc cells no what are rbc cells what is rbc rbc means red blood cells what is rbc red blood cells you have red blood cells in your body no so these red blood cells are short lived which means each cell will have only less uh, can live only for less number of days they cannot live long so within few days they will be broken down or they will die and they are called as old rbc cells because they are not functional they cannot function like the normal rbc cells because they are dead or they are old so these has to be removed from your body no imagine uh, monthly ones uh, 10 uh, rbcs 
are dead. So after 10 years or 15 years, how many dead RBC cells will be in your body? Your body will be dumped with waste RBCs, right? With dead RBCs. So periodically the dead cells has to be removed from your body. So this dead RBC cells, what they do? They break down and the broken down product is called as bile pigment. So what did I tell you? There are many RBC cells which are dead and these dead cells break into something called as bile pigment. Okay, and this bile pigment will release will be released into a portion of the small intestine called as duodenum. It is a excretory organ. No? So it will be released into the duodenum and then from the duodenum as usual along with the feces feces means the waste material of your body along with the feces the bile pigment will be released in outside your body so what did i tell you old rbc cells in your body is broken down and it forms something called as bile pigments and bile pigments are uh, released into the duodenum and afterwards it will be passing out of your body uh, when you excrete like when you pass your stools it will go out so this is the function of liver as excretory organ then the homework part so today's homework is read page number 89 so as soon as you watch this video please read this page so that you will never forget the concept for a longer time okay so that is all for today's class and until i meet you in your next botany class you all take care and bye bye